What's up divas and what's up divas? So you guys already know what time it is. It's Wednesday, so that means it's Real Talk Wednesday. Also, I want to tell you guys happy Valentine's Day for everyone who is watching. Um, if you don't have a Valentine's or if you do, either way, happy Valentine's Day. And I want to be everybody Valentine's this Valentine's. So love you guys, all of you guys. Happy Valentine's Day. I hope you guys have an amazing day. Just know that I love you guys as well. So, so yes, you guys, I hope you guys have like an amazing Valentine's Day. Sometimes it can be a little bit overrated. Like seriously, like sometimes it can be a little bit overrated. But anyway, so you guys already know what time it is. It's real talk. We got a little Valentine's backdrop and stuff. I got one of my favorite wigs on and stuff. We're about to get into this. Um, I'm going to only do two today because, um, yeah, I'm only going to go two because it's late. Well, it's not really late late but you know what I'm saying the day I'm recording this is definitely not on a Wednesday but it is Monday instead of Tuesday and it is late in the evening for me plus I, I just want to go make another wig I got things I gotta do and I gotta edit a video so I got I got stuff that I need to do you know what I'm saying like stuff but um Anyway, there's nothing really new going on. Last Wednesday, you guys know, I had two root canals. So I was like biting on my lips like all day um, until the next day. I'm not sure if he filed down my tooth. He did file it down, but I had to get used to it. Like my lip was like so like numb and I just kept chewing my own daggone lip. Um, but I'm really excited about getting my teeth finished, like getting my new teeth and stuff like that, which I have been going through a lot with the dentist and my own teeth. Um, my friend Chrissy did tell me what to do on getting my money back and kind of like going after the dentist that did my fillings um, not even a year ago, which they need to all be replaced with root canals because he did like a shoddy job on them. So I'm glad she told, she told me that because I feel like, you know, when somebody is really trying hard to get their teeth fixed, which is not cheap at all, you, you want to give them like the best service regardless, like teeth are not cheap, like seriously. And like teeth are important because that's the first thing that people notice. Like I was so insecure in my teeth, um, especially when I had the gap, and that just was formed because of my teeth being pulled. And sometimes I just feel like I'm the one that has all the bad luck because I feel like, damn, if it's somebody else that have a gap, and then the gap that I have, which I don't even want the gap, but the gap that I have, it won't even be in the middle. It'll be crooked, like it'll be over here. So I was so insecure about that, and it just kind of like when I look at my old videos now. Prior to my teeth being fixed, I just be looking at them like, oh, girl, how could you not like, how could you just want to talk that much? Like, you know what I'm saying? And I know that's, we, we're like our worst critic, I think. Like, as people in general, we're like our worst critic. And like, it didn't bother me as much. It, well, it did bother me back then. It did. Um, so that's the reason why you would never see me smile. But now when I look at it, I feel like it looks even 10 times worse than what it did. And I just, you know, I just feel like when when you're trying to fix something on yourself, it's horrible when someone takes advantage of you. And so like I really felt like I was being taken advantage of because you giving me these ser services that I'm paying for straight cash. I ain't got no insurance for this. And you're doing like a shoddy ass job on my teeth. And so now I got to turn around and get freaking root canals for every last fucking feeling that you did like on some real shit like who the fuck does that um i feel like really going in his dentist's office and smacking the shit out of them but i'm not gonna do that because it's best to not do shit like that and you could always win a lot better when you sue somebody so i will be like looking into how to get him not maybe disbarred but you're gonna give me my money back and then some like so i'm gonna need a little bit more extra skrilla in my pocket you're gonna have to serve up them coins because a girl need her money back and then some you know what i mean like I, I should have to go through all of this. Like, seriously, I think like a lot of the reason why my teeth are like breaking off and going through more trouble is because of him. So they was already like in not in the best condition as it is. So I'm glad that I'm getting that done. You know what I mean? Um, other than that, I really haven't been into doing much, but working, working, working. Um, yeah. I don't really have anything to report to you guys. Not at all. I have um, the cutest little Valentine's person, which is my grandson. He is my Valentine's this year, as last year, um, okay? Um, so I have two Valentine's this year, um, and he is the cutest out of all the Valentine's in the world, the entire world. But um, other than that, yeah, really nothing has been, like, worth yeah. My weight is still, like, fluctuating. Um, last week, I was at 192. Now I'm at 194, so, like, Girl, I've been trying to do different types of squats with the weights, which is great. But let me tell you something. 
them things ain't no joke. And your butt be, like, not your butt, but your legs be hurt. And I be just like, oh, my God. Sometimes if I don't breathe right, I be getting lightheaded. I be ready to pass out. So it's just like, oh, my God, really? So other than that, we're going to get into this. We're going to jump right into this real talk. If you have a real talk that you want me to talk about, you can always send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. Please make sure to put in the subject line, real talk, so that way I know that it's a real talk, Um, you know, email whatever. Um, if you want to change the names of the people in the email, then you go ahead and do so, like telling me. If not, then, you know, I will just automatically assume that you did. And if not, then I will just make it myself. So either way, you can go ahead and send me an email. So let's get this popping, you guys. Like, like, let's just get this popping. Huh? 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 What? Huh? Huh? Okay, you guys, so this one is real talk. What should I do? Am I petty? All right, names have been changed. Caution, it's long. Hey, April, I have been watching you for a while, and I feel like I know you. Like, for real, for real, in life, in real life, know you. But, laugh out loud. But anywho, on on with this real talk. Just call me Deidre and my best friend, Lee. Call, well, the bestie and I haven't gotten along lately, so they ain't been getting along. Ever since my girls and I moved in with my man a year ago, she's been real deal shady. We used to kick it all the time, talk on the phone all day, go grocery shopping and hair shopping, drink, cook, everything. Well, her reason for not coming over is it's his house and she doesn't want to invade and we live too far out. And by the way, she travels further to do her hair shopping, like what the fuck? So anyway, I kept telling her to come over my house. He doesn't care. Matter of fact, he said she's welcome to come out. And I also told her I could come over to her house as well. It doesn't matter. So she finally came out. She finally comes over. And so me and my daughters. Um, so she finally came over so I could roll her daughter's hair. And I'm thinking we're going to kick it. Right? Nope. She leaves as soon as my man gets home. Who does that? And when she came over again, I noticed the way she acts when he comes around. She gets extremely quiet and shy. Now, Lee is nowhere near shy or quiet. She's the type, if you look at her wrong, she's cussing you the hell out and she's ready to fight. So since my man and I got together, she went and found her a man too. So I'm like, oh shit, we about to double date. Well, no, that hasn't happened yet. When I planned for us to all go out, all of a sudden, where we were going was too far and cost way too much. But she goes out with her friends from work and they double date. Really? Lee has been the best friend and big sister I've always wanted since my parents passed away. And I'm not close to neither of my sisters. So she's been my rider or die. And she knows that. I'm her and I've told her plenty of times, no matter what, you and me, us, never part. Makita, seen from Color Purple. Oh, okay. Well, I didn't say it like her. So I, I love that movie, but I didn't say it like her. But for real, I don't know what to do. She's acting really silly, and I could go into more detail on how silly things have gotten, but that's another story for another time. Girl, why didn't you tell me? Because I would surely have liked to know. I really don't know what else to say. I'm like, what did I do wrong? Okay, that's it for now. Thanks, April, and take it. P.S. I'm going to send you a pic of my big sister. I swear y'all look more like sisters than me and her. Oh, oh yeah, we kind of do. And my sister and my daughter, don't show the pics. I think she watches. Okay, that's fine. I wouldn't show her, but we kind of do look alike. Aww. So Deidre and her man. Okay. So basically, Deidre and her bestie ain't been getting along because Deidre done moved in with her man. Before that, Deidre and Lee, her and her best friend Lee, did everything together. They cooked together. They went shopping together. They did their hair together. They watched TV together. They went to the mall together. They went to the movies together. They just did every fucking thing together, okay, all the fucking time. So I'm trying to figure out if you two bitches did everything together all the time, when did you even have time to find a fucking man? Like, I'm trying to figure this out. When do you have time to show to your man? Like, because you guys be together all the time. So it's like, but that's cool. Like, you know, it's it's hard to find real true friends. You know what I'm saying? I told y'all this before. Like, now I'm the type of shit, bitch. You do one fucking thing to me as a friend, I'm cutting you the fuck off. Because if you did that shit in an early friendship relationship, then bitch, you got to go. All right? But y'all been friends. She like a sister to you that, you know, that ain't a sister to you. But y'all been really close and y'all do everything together. 
But now that you have moved in with your man, you and your daughters have moved in with your man, she kind of like on, you know, kind of like the quiet side. She kind of like shying away. She ain't coming around like that. She ain't re in interacting with you the same way. And, you know, then she's telling you like, it's too far out. Y'all live too far. And that's his house. I don't want to feel like a third wheel. I don't want to invade on your privacy. You know what I'm saying? I get that. I can totally understand that. I totally can get that. You know what I'm saying? Like with my bestie, well, she was my bestie. Um, who lived out here she she moved to um you know she had five kids and her husband and you know at first i used to feel that way too like when i would go over to her house like i would kind of feel like a third wheel and sometimes i would feel kind of like like not uncomfortable but i just felt like un not even uneasy but i just felt a little bit maybe uneasy because here it is he's showing her all this attention and they've got this great relationship and here it is here is april with nobody, just sitting at the counter drinking like we always do. And ain't really got nothing to talk about. You know what I'm saying? So I, I would feel that way. And like when we went to Vegas, her husband was already in Vegas because, you know, he had to work there. So she and I drove there just to meet him. And I don't know. It just felt that that's when I definitely felt like a third wheel the whole trip in Vegas. Like even though we was there for only a day, I definitely felt like a third wheel then because you know, they've got like this good relationship. They're holding hands. And here it is me. I'm um, just walking either next to them or behind them. So that was the part that made me feel kind of like uneasy and I kind of felt uncomfortable. It wasn't anything that they did, but I just felt like, you know, I just felt like a third wheel. And sometimes it can suck when you feel like a third wheel, especially when you're so used to being with your best friend all the time. And now she has, you know, kind of like you know, not moved on, but she's found someone in her life. So I can understand where she's coming from. And I probably would feel the same way. Like, you know, I wouldn't probably come around as much because I probably don't want to feel like a third wheel. But like you're saying, she's come over a couple of times and, you know, she's left as soon as your man has come home. Or she just doesn't say anything as soon as he gets there. And I get that because she's not used to him. You know what I'm saying? She's your best friend, not his best friend. Meaning she can open up to you. She can just be herself. And she doesn't have to worry about you judging her. You know what I'm saying? Like when he comes around, even though he says she's welcome over there anytime, you know what I mean? She could come through, whatever. We can all kick it and hang out. That's fine and dandy. People could tell you that all day till you blew in the face. People could tell you a million things. Just because someone tells you that does not necessarily mean that this is what the fuck they said, okay? Just because I tell you, bitch, you can come over anytime and hang out does not necessarily mean I want your black ass at my motherfucking house all the fucking time. Like, seriously, like when I tell somebody, oh, you can come over anytime. I really don't mean that shit. Like, I hope you really don't come over anytime. But what I'm telling you is I'm welcoming you. You're welcome to my home. But bitch, don't come over any fucking time because you will find yourself standing outside ringing the doorbell, okay? So I get where she's coming from, like, you know what I'm saying? When he comes around or when he's there, she just kind of goes back into her little shell because she does not know him like that. That's not her best friend. That's your man. That's not her man. That's your man. You're her best friend. And she feels like when you and her are together, that's y'all together. Yes, when you and her are together. She could be herself. She could relax. She can chill. She could put her feet back. But then, now keep in mind, even though you say to her, you can come over to my house anytime, in reality, Deidre, you can tell her, well, you can come over my house anytime you want. He even said it. In reality, it's really his home. He's been there first. Even though he can tell you guys it's your home too, that nigga could be on some slide shit and be like, well, you know what? You can get the fuck out. So I'm not saying he's going to do that, but what I'm saying is it's still his home. You understand what I'm saying? And she feels some type of way. You got to give her time to warm the fuck up and like get to know him as a person. If you tell me that she's acting shy or she's getting quiet when he's around and that's not how she is, she'll cut you out. I'd be the same way. Like I will cuss you out in a heartbeat. I have no problem cussing your motherfucker out. Like seriously, I will cuss your black ass the fuck out. But when I go over to somebody's house, like, I'm not going to carry on and cuss them the fuck out. I'm going to just be on my best behavior and I'm going to just go ahead and chill. I'm not going to go there and just act the fuck up and look at this motherfucker and let him judge me. You know what I'm saying? Because she don't know if your man's going to judge her, how she is. It's just, it's just like, you know, you're her best friend. And if you guys are having like differences like that, then don't let her stray away. So now she got a man and you like, oh shit, now she got a man. We could double date. Let me tell you. That's cool and dandy. We watch TV. We see these motherfuckers on TV double dating. 
trust me, I would like to do stuff like that too, double date, because that makes it fun. You know what I'm saying? Because listen, if you got a best friend and you like to be around your best friend, you like to be around your man and your best friend got a husband or man, you want to it's cool to all get along in the group. You guys, you guys can go and do group things together, go on vacation together, go out to dinner. That's cool. It's fun. It's that's those are nice things to do instead of it just being you and your man all the time. You got your best friend and her man, and then they're getting along. That's cool. That's something that is fun to do. I wish I could do that, but or have, I wish I could have always done something like that. But it doesn't work out like that. Now she's gotten a man, and that's good for her. Just because you found a man, don't think that she found one because you found one. Because, sweetheart, let me tell you something. Y'all two bitches was together all the fucking time. Like, seriously, all the fucking time. Like, people probably would have thought y'all was in a relationship. However, now that you have moved in with your boyfriend, y'all don't see each other as much. Y'all don't spend as much time together. Now she got time to find a motherfucking man. So don't feel like because you got a man, she went out to find one too because it doesn't work like that. It's just that y'all haven't spent so much time together that she was able to find one, okay? She didn't have you at, joined to the hip and you she wasn't joined to your hip. She had time to do Leah and find somebody to, to date and to get to know. Same thing with you. Now, you want to go on a double date and shit. That's cool. That's something fun because that's your best friend. You guys, you know, y'all got kids. Y'all both got kids. That's something cool to do. However, the first thing that you need to do is talk with her. Like you telling her, yeah, my man said you could come over anytime. Okay, you could tell me that. Like I said to you, blue in the face, bitch. That don't mean I want you there all the time. Like people get in their own little zones. Like, you know, like, okay, you, you live with your man now. She don't want to feel like she invading your space because you guys need private time. You got kids. When they're not around, they sleep and you guys need time as adults, adult time. Okay. She don't want to feel like she's sitting on the couch and she's invading your space. I get that. Okay. However, just telling her like that don't mean shit. Like I said, you can tell somebody something to you blue in the face. That don't mean shit. What you need to do, honey, is have a talk with her. Have a nice best friend conversation with her. And when I said have a nice best friend conversation with her, I don't mean on the phone, okay? Because y'all always on the phone. Like, shit, not on the phone. This is something that is, like, really personal. And you need to have her feel that she's comfortable and welcome over there. And you need to be able to give her eye contact so that she knows that what you're saying to her is sincere and genuine. So when I say best friend conversation... Meaning, you need to go to her home and talk with her. Not invite her over out of her comfort zone and have a talk with her. You need to go over and spend some time with just her. Leave your girls at home and go over and spend some time with her. Or if your girls play with her daughter, then that's fine. Bring them over and they can just keep each other company. But I really feel like you need to be able to sit down and have a nice long talk with Leah. Bring some wine or champagne. Bring some wine. You know what I mean? Some cheese. I like. I love fucking cheese. Okay. Bring some wine over and have a nice long conversation with her and let her know, like you know, what you have been noticing. If you feel that these things that she's doing is silly, then you need to address that to her. But I would highly suggest don't use the word silly because that could come off as very offensive to someone. Because if you was to say to me. Um, April, you've been acting real silly lately. I, bitch, I'll probably slap your lips off on some real shit. I probably would slap your motherfucking lips off because you ain't about to come to me and talk about I'm silly. That's like a humiliation. Like, you dissing me. Like, oh, so, bitch, you think I'm acting motherfucking silly and you feel like it's okay to say such things to me like that? Like, no. What you want to do is you want to approach her in, like, a manner where you are sisterhood. Don't tell her like, you know, you acting silly and all of this extra shit. Like, don't do that. What you need to do is just, you know, see if she's home, pop up and surprise her and, and bring some wine. I'm pretty sure she would like that. Um, and just have a conversation with her. The same things that you've said to me, you say to her, but just X out some of the shit. Like you've been silly and all this. You need to let her know, like, with that color purple say saying, you and me is forever. Okay. I don't I don't really know how she said it, but like I said, um I know what you're talking about. You need to let her know like this is us. We like this. Ain't no man gonna come in between us. And I don't like that you've been distancing yourself from me. I understand that you give me or you're trying to give me my space because I'm in a relationship and I live with him. However, we still have a friendship and your friendship means a lot to me. Like a lot of people take for granted their friends and that really sucks because, like, 
me, I don't have any best friends and it's hard to find friends, true, genuine friends, like on some real shit. It really, really, really is hard to find true, genuine friends. And like, I try to kind of like keep myself now at a distance from people because like when I open my heart to somebody as a friend and then I feel like you did me dirty, like then that makes me like cut all ties off with you. And not only that, but it makes it bad for the next person that comes along that wants to be my friend because now I built this huge wall and I'm really on my guard. You know what I'm saying? So it's really hard to find good friends these days. And like, you know, I, I, I did have a best friend who I loved dearly, like straight up. You guys know that I loved her dearly. Um, for real. And like, I still say to this day, I don't really know how we broke apart as friends or whatever, but you know, I do know that, you know, one of us definitely has to take the initiative to reach out to the other. And in my heart, I feel like, you know what, April, just grow some motherfucking balls and just call her up and talk to her like on some real shit. Because even though we are miles and miles and miles and miles and miles and miles apart, I still love her and I still miss her. Our long conversations, we would talk to each other all the time, all day long. And it's unfortunate that we couldn't be together all the time. Like we didn't live in the same states because if we did, we'd probably be together every single freaking day for sure. So I know that it's hard to find friends, good friends for sure. I definitely do know that. And um, when you find like a good friend, you, you want to keep a hold of them because there's some people out here that you really would think that's your friends and then them bitches ain't your friends. They 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 want to use you. And the first moment you get something, they acting shady or whatever and they acting real shady. So, you know, when you said that she acting shady, I don't think that Leah's acting shady towards you. I just feel like, you know what I'm saying? She don't want to feel like a third wheel. And trust me when I'm telling you. I know that feeling. Like, seriously, I know that feeling of feeling like a third wheel when I was going out with my friend Rebecca and her husband. We would go to a lot of places together. We go to dinner, we go out for drinks together, and it's always us three. And, like, come on now. I don't want to be the one that looks like, you know, like she's alone all the time. For all of that, I would just rather me and her go. Like, she always was in, you know, I didn't mind her husband coming, but it wasn't like, like, Please leave him at home sometimes, for real. Like, can you just leave him at home sometimes? Because this is about me and you. I don't really want your husband along with us all the time. Like, that shit is not cool. It's girl time. And I just, sometimes I don't, I can't take it when females cannot do anything without their man. Like, not saying that because, oh, I didn't have one at the time. But I'm saying, like, bitch, grow some motherfucking balls and step outside the box and hang out with your friend. It's me and you. This nigga don't need to be along with you guys. But I, but when we were together, I felt very uncomfortable and very uneasy. And I felt like the third motherfucking wheel. So I don't think Lee is acting shady. So if you think that she's acting shady or she's maybe she's jealous, I don't feel like that. Because if you were telling me that she gets quiet when he's around <clears throat> or he leaves when or she leaves when he comes home, then that has nothing to do with feeling jealous. It feels that she's out of her comfort zone and she doesn't want to feel uncomfortable as a third wheel, okay? That's how she feels. Like She felt as though it was just you and her all the time. You and her against the world, Bonnie and Clyde, or Bonnie and Bonnet, all right? Or Thelma and Louise, by the way. You know what I'm saying? That was you two. And then now that you have moved in with a man, it's a little bit different, and that's a lot to get used to. Like, seriously, that's a lot to get fucking used to. Even though it's not, it is still. You understand what I'm saying? Like, okay, she knows that she can come over, but I have him. Men are so judgmental. They'd be quick to tell him, I don't like your friend. Don't be around her no more. We've seen it, and we've heard all different types of things. And like I said, you could tell her, and he could tell her till he's blue in the face. She's blue in the face. You blue in the face. That she can come over whenever you want. Come over anytime. Y'all motherfuckers know y'all don't want her to come over anytime. So it's okay to come over at 12 midnight when y'all getting it on. Like, really? Unless it was an emergency or something. Don't tell people things that you really, really, really don't mean. And you may mean that sincerely. Um, But me, personally, if I tell you you can come over anytime, bitch, please don't t think that you could just drop by my motherfucking house. Because for one, I don't even like company like that. Like, I told you guys, I'm an introvert. I don't like people in my face all the time. Um, I don't like people around me a lot of the times. I'm not unfriendly. However, I don't need no motherfuckers dropping by my goddamn house uninvited. Bitch, you're not invited, then which I will open the door and you, I will talk to you right there. I will stand in the doorway. And you'll probably like be like, bitch, can I come in? You weren't invited. Trust me, when some people tell you you can come over anytime, 
Bitch, they really truly don't mean that shit. Or like, call me anytime. No, bitch, please don't call me anytime because I will swipe you to the motherfucking left or up, whatever way the decline button is, to not speak to you because I don't like to talk to people over the phone all the time neither unless me and you is dating. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, if you ain't my man, please don't call me, okay? Like, seriously. <sighs> the only motherfucker I talk to like three, four, five hours is my goddamn husband. I'm not about to be sitting on the phone with a bitch all day talking to her every single day like no. So you guys have kind of like separated from the relationship of being together all the time. And it's hard for sometimes some people to deal with because they know that that person is always there for them. And I get that. And you probably feel like an empty nest right here. And she probably feels that way too. However, you guys need to rekindle the friendship and don't let it go so far like I have with my bestie. Because trust and believe you will be thinking about her like it ain't no tomorrow. Just the same way that I do. And I'm pretty sure that you do already or else you wouldn't be writing me this. So me personally, I would have a long conversation with Leah and let her know what's been on your mind. And give her the sincerity and the love that, you know what I'm saying, you have been gave her. Don't just tell her, oh girl, you can come up anytime. Because that may seem cool, but it's not very warm and inviting understand and no you're not being petty but if you don't have a conversation with her about it and have a long talk with her about it then you are going to be the one that's acting shady and petty not her you know what i'm saying so it's a real shit have a, have a talk with her it's easy to talk to people sometimes people just keep like that's part of communication some people just don't want to talk they want to text shit like Please don't text me no shit like that. Like, I don't really like to text all day long, but I would I would rather you give me a phone call or better yet, come to my face and say the shit. Like, if we got beef, bitch. Don't come to my face. But you know what I'm saying? This is what it is. So we got to move on past this and we're going to get on to the next one. All righty. All right. So, hey, April, I hope you're feeling great today. Man, have I got a doozy for you. A doozy. Hmm. I'm not going to mention any names because I know there are a lot of families that can relate to what I'm about to tell you. Hold on to your wig, girl. Oh, shit. This is my favorite motherfucking wig, too. So I'm best to hold on to this real tight, okay? I have a sister who watches her grandchildren through the state. Rewind, she raised her daughters to have manners, be respectful, and to say please and thank you. Um, now they all have children of their own. As the matriarch of her family, you would think she would instill the same on her grandchildren. Oh, hell no. As she has gotten older, she's only in her late 40s. All she does is criticize her daughters behind their back, in front of their children. She calls her grandchildren niggas, dumb motherfuckers, ugly ass hoes, tartar, and the little then the list goes on. We're talking ages ranging from two to now 13. Five grandchildren. So imagine them hearing this all of their lives. She is good at telling people what they need to do and not heading her own advice. To date, she has picked up weight and is forever complaining about dumb shit. She has ran off all of her friends she grew up with, and she's gotten even kicked off of Facebook five times within a two-year span. <clears throat> she gets into arguments with people she does not even know on Facebook and starts with the name calling. If it bothers you, don't read it, I tell her. I used to talk to her every day because we were in different states. Then it went to once a week because when I got off the phone, my chest would hurt. I felt sick to my stomach and wanted to throw up. I recently went to visit her only to be woke up out of my sleep to get your fucking ass up, you dumb, stupid motherfucker. You make me sick. She wasn't talking to you. I know she was talking to one of those little kids or something. Oh my God, April. She was talking to her grandson like that at 530 in the morning. What a way to start your school day. I asked her what was the problem. She had the nerve to say, oh, he makes me sick. That's how you have to talk to his dumb ass. Only be told she does that in front of them, too. Wow. One of her daughters has three of the five grandchildren, and she's the same way. Those poor children are going to have to find their own way in life because they get beat down verbally, mentally, and physically. I don't know what to do. I'm not there to be a witness to the hitting, but I've heard them through the phone. This makes me so angry, and I don't know what to do. I want to block my number and call CPS, but when you call 800 numbers, your number shows up. She has a nerve to say she has called CPS on one of her daughters, but they don't do anything? I don't believe her. When she sees them get um, the shit kicked out of them and how nasty the house is, she calls me. But I have to say to her, you do the same thing. Of course, she says she's not as bad. I would like all of your muffins to give me suggestions. My muffins. 
I like that. She is that family you hear about and has the system ignore her. She has said she knows she can't watch other children because she can't knock the shit out of them. Her words, not mine. Today, the grandchildren are skipping school, ages 8 and 13. The 8-year-old wears pull-ups, shits on herself, and steals. The 13-year-old is still yelling at teachers, is stealing, yelling at teachers. The 11-year-old, let it be known, he can't stand his mother and threw a knife at his sister. My sister is mean, evil, and I personally think all of those grandchildren need to be taken away. In public and on Facebook, she acts so innocent and has never hurt anyone. She's never hurt anyone. Please give me your thoughts. There is so much more I could say, but it would be way too long. As I type this, I'm thinking of a way to contact the authorities, yet still remain anonymous. Damn. So, girlfriend, I could totally relate. Um, I don't know any. I probably, I, I might do. You know what? I may know some people, I, but you know something? Here's the thing. First of all, Calling CPS Child Protection Services is definitely anonymous, okay? It's definitely anonymous. And if you feel uncomfortable about that, girlfriend, go use a pay phone and call that motherfucking asses. Because it's a 1-800 number. You ain't got to put no money in. If you feel that uncomfortable with calling um, from your own phone line, then definitely call from a pay phone, okay? But yet and still, it's still anonymous. So, however, here's the thing. So, first of all, I'm trying to figure out. This lady, um, your friends, okay, I think this is your friend. Oh, this is your sister, excuse me, your sister. Your sister, she's in her late 40s. She has five grandchildren, and they range from the age of 2 and 13. How old was she when she had her first kid? Because if she has a 13-year-old grandchild, how old was she when she had her first child? And I ask this because, first of all, she doesn't have the patience or the tolerance level to raise kids. If you cursing out kids like that and you cursing out little motherfuckers, little kids, and you telling them that they dumbasses and they stupid and they ugly and they black and they niggas and they tartar and they hoes and they dumb motherfuckers, then you ought to be, somebody ought to smack your motherfucking teeth out. Like, who talks to their little grandkids like that? Now, true indeed, don't get me wrong, as, as, a, as a mother, my first kid was at 18. I used to go off on my kids. Like, seriously, I would, I would, I would go off on them. I pro I've threatened them quite a few times, but I've never beat them senseless. I've never called them ugly, dumb, dumb niggers. I've never called them shit like that. I don't do shit like that, but I will cuss their ass out. You know what I'm saying? But you don't, Freaking call your little grandkids ugly and dumb motherfuckers and tartar. I mean, I don't know what tartar is, but I'm thinking that tar is black, so her kids must be dark skin, which is still fucked up. And who calls their grandkids hoes? Like they're two to thirteen. How are they fucking hoes? Okay. And it's sad that you have to sit there and constantly watch this shit and constantly watch this shit. But She's never going to change. This is who she is, and this is how she's always going to be. And so she babysits her grandkids, and the state pays her. Okay, so that's what she does. However, she's saying she can't watch nobody else's kids because she would, she she can't knock the fuck out of somebody else's kids. Let me tell you something. If she's running her mouth like that, and she's loud and obnoxious, obnoxious and ignorant like that, and she just got like a potty mouth to two-year-olds, then there's something definitely wrong with her. And she's probably, the, her children are probably the same way as well. So she's got five grandkids and she's in her late 40s. I'm 43. I only have two grandkids. They just two of and three and five, okay? So if you've got a 13-year-old grandkid, I'm trying to figure out how old was you when you had your child and how old was your daughter when she had hers? Either way, it's not my place to judge anybody, but I just feel like when we have all these young mothers that keep having all these kids, like, okay, I was 18 when I had my son, but thank God my mother was super strict, so I had patience and I wasn't acting like this. However, it seems like she was way younger than 18 when she had her child because she got a 13-year-old grandson or granddaughter, whatever. But it seems like when the younger you are to have the kids, it's like these kids keep having these kids younger and younger and younger. And the generation now is already fucked up, some of them, because they just don't know right from wrong. They think that it's okay to go around and do certain things. So their mentality is totally like kind of like fucked up. But we got this lady who's older than me and she should know better. You know what I'm saying? However, she feels like she's living in a young mind state still. Like who goes around calling grandchildren tartar, ugly d motherfuckers, dumb motherfuckers, hoes? Like I wouldn't even call my kids some shit like that. Let alone somebody in the street. I'm not going to call somebody in the street like that. Names like that. And on top of that, like 
like she says, if you don't like it, then don't fucking watch it or respond to it. Who the fuck goes on Facebook and gets kicked off five times? But also, not only that, why are you on fucking social media arguing with people? Like, okay, I have went off on people before, but I'm not picking fights. If you come for me and say some smart shit, I'm going to say some smart shit back to you. And then that's it. You're not going to come back and say nothing else to me. I guarantee you, you're not, all right? Because either I don't went in on your ass or I got my muffins who have been going off on your ass. So therefore, I don't have to keep going back and forth with you. But I think it's stupid and pathetic and petty and immature to read something that somebody wrote on their own post and then say some smart shit and pick a fight or argument with them. Girl, keep it pushing, all right? That's what I be talking about, internet thugs. Some of y'all stay running your mouths on the internet thinking it's okay. And then when you see that person in fucking real, real life, y'all don't have a motherfucking word to say. Nothing. Y'all is quiet as kept. Okay. Just quiet. But here's the thing. You feeling uneasy and I feel sorry for them kids because that's not right to them. They are verbally abused and then they acting up, they stealing. Okay. They stealing and they yelling at the teachers and one is eight years old or what, she's eight and she's wearing pull-ups and she's pooping and peeing on herself. That's just disgusting. Like, seriously, I don't know if she's wearing them when she's going to bed at night, but that's just disgusting. So that means that not only is the grandmother not taking time with her, but I mean, because that's not really her responsibility, but her own parents are not taking time with her. Because what eight year old do you know wears motherfucking pull ups to bed? Like they do have those freaking commercials for, um, you know pull-ups for bigger kids to sleep in at night. But I, I find that to be just fucking, just like stupid, like really, really stupid. Like if your kid cannot get up and use the motherfucking bathroom, then it's an issue. And let's talk about this. If you got an eight-year-old shitting on themselves, they ain't shitting on themselves in their sleep because for one, you can pee on yourself in your sleep, you can pee the bed, but you cannot shit the bed. You have to be awoke to use those muscles of shitting. So... Let's just say that the eight-year-old is lazy, okay? And she's just doing something because that's what she does. And as long as you continue to clean it up, she's going to do that. So we need some we need some type of boundaries. We need some type of home etiquette. We need some type of mannerism taught. You know what I'm saying? Like you need, so you got these kids shitting on themselves, stealing and yelling at the teachers and shit. And the grandmother is cussing all the grandchildren out. You stupid little dumb motherfucker. I can't stand you. You cannot tell kids that you cannot stand them. That is not fucking right. You cannot do that shit. Okay? That is not what the fuck you do. You do not tell kids that you can't stand them. Okay? Because they can grow up to believe that shit. All right? I'm not saying I was the best mother ever because I will not get an award for being the best mother ever. However, when we grow up, we, we learn shit. And I would to think that because I'm 43 years old now and I have grandsons, they not the best, meaning they not the goodest little boys in the world. Okay? But they not the worst neither. I got my little spoiled tinky man and you have to talk to him. I don't go around calling him a little dumb nigga and, and shit. Like, I don't do shit like that to him. You talk to him. Sometimes you got to yell at him. Sometimes you may have to pop him. Then I have my other one who's five. That that one is bad. He bad too. He's just like thugged out bad. But I'm not cursing him and I'm not going off on him. Like as I got older, I have learned like, you know what? You have to be a little bit more patient and you have to be a little bit more respectful to others feelings. Okay. I don't like to go around hurting people's feelings. That's not what I do. However, being that she's older than me, and she's already taught her children and she, her children have already had manners. Yes, ma'am, please. And thank you. Why the fuck would you teach your kids to have manners? And then when you get grandkids, you talk to them like they fucking wild animals in, out in the streets, some wild, wild wildebeest. Like, who does that? Like, we don't do that. As older people, as grandparents, we are supposed to set the example for these children and give them a role model. But when you call them all kinds of names, they ain't looking at you no better than anybody else. And that's why they act wild like this. They act like a bunch of wild little little people running around doing things that they have no freaking business doing. And then here it is. You got to sit back and watch this shit. As a responsible adult, my friend who's emailed me this, as a responsible adult, you owe it to these children to seek further help okay seriously like you're you're not you're not gonna be no better if you just sitting there watching it and not doing anything about it you're not no better if you just sit back and watch and don't do anything about it 
You know what I'm saying? I'm not trying to judge you, but I would just me personally, if it were me, I would do something about it. You don't have to personally do something for with, about it, meaning watch the kids or do anything or give her your two cents of advice because she's not going to listen to you. But as a auntie to these children, okay, because those are your aunts, your, your nieces and nephews, what you need to do is you need to report her. If you feel scared because it's child protection services, then like I said, go ahead and use a payphone. Okay? Use a payphone. It's a toll free number. You don't got to put no quarters in. You can call and report her. But I guarantee you, it's freaking anonymous. Ain't nobody giving your information out at all. They're not going to give your information out to your sister. However, I wouldn't sit back and, and watch the shit unfold. These kids are already on the wrong path. You know what I'm saying? They stealing. They shitting on themselves. They peeing on themselves. They stealing. They yelling at teachers. They throwing knives at each other. They probably cussing their little friends out and stuff. And God knows what else they doing. You know what I'm saying? So they are already on the wrong path. And I can only imagine how they're going to grow up like in the system, meaning in jail or a group home or some shit like that because we got the grandmother who's cussing them out. And I'm thinking that the parents are as well because they running amok and running wild, okay? So we got all these little out of control children. Like seriously, if that were my grandkids and they were throwing knives and shitting and pissing on themselves, I wouldn't even be watching them. I would not be even watching them, okay? So what I think you really need to do is kind of contact the proper authorities. Like nobody don't like to be nobody's snitch and nobody don't like to tell. And some people be like, oh, that's not right to do or whatever. But maybe before you even take that step, maybe you should really sit down and have a talk with your sister. I mean, it seems like you've already tried, but she kind of compare herself to other people like, well, I'm not that bad. And so it seems like she's just in denial about a lot of things, which kind of like sucks because sometimes you got to grow up and mature. You know what I'm saying? It's time to grow up and mature however if she's not trying to be open to your advice and listen to what you have to say and it just continues and continues then you probably would need to take the proper step and contact the proper authorities like i would never want to call like child protection services on nobody or the police however if you are putting these children in harm's way which it seems like it to me then you definitely need to you know contact the proper authorities like it's not cool to be calling little kids names like that like nigger and nigglet and whatever else you want to call them like that's child abuse that is a form of child abuse and like that could really scar a child like like i said i'm not the best parent in the world and nobody is however we learn over time and if you can sit there and teach your kids how to be mannerable like she was doing yes ma'am no ma'am please and thank you then why can't you teach your grandchildren the same thing instead of sitting around calling them names that's not only child abuse but you being a bully to them because you know damn well if those little kids were to say that back to that lady she would probably try to knock their head off so don't make it okay for you to do that and that they can't do it to you like i don't i'm not saying that two wrongs make a right but you don't do that to kids like you just don't do shit like that like i have learned over in my time like you know some of the things that i have said to my children may not have been right you know what i'm saying but i have learned this over time but if you start off on a good foot and you teaching them manners and they good kids why the fuck would you just instill some bad shit on your grandkids that's probably why her grandkids act like that because the mother and the grandmother like nobody is giving them any attention they just instilling nothing but bullshit on those kids and i feel sorry for them you know what i'm saying like i don't like to feel sorry for kids but i feel sorry for them like on some real shit so on, on reality like you know what i'm saying you really need to have a talk with her and have her sit down because that's your sister so hopefully she will see eye to eye with you and let her know but some people are just so stubborn and if they set in their ways and that's how she really is like going around picking fights with people on social media and dumb shit then that means like she's like she's just like unhelpable like and i hate to say shit like that but like why are you acting like that at your age like what the fuck like i know that we as women sometimes we get frustrated as parents we get frustrated and we may spaz out i'll be the first to spaz out sometime too but you gotta learn how to carry yourself not you know what i'm saying like don't be on social media acting like a clown, like, because then people look at you like they don't take you serious, okay? And then you want to wake kids up at 5 30 in the morning and call them all kind of names. Like, if you was my grandmother, I wouldn't even want to go over to your motherfucking house, okay? I wouldn't even go over to your house. Fuck you and your and your house. Like, you ain't my grandmother. I wouldn't want to go over to your house. You know what I'm saying? So she got all these kids, and she's probably not even like licensed to watch the kids or whatever because she's the grandmother so you don't have to be but if she don't have the patience then she shouldn't do it for the money because 
the way I'm looking at it, if she's talking to her grandkids like that, she's definitely not watching the grandkids out of love. She's she's watching them because of the money, because she's getting paid from the state. And when I watch my grandsons, I don't get paid. I don't ask for money. I don't want money. Those are my grandkids. I'm gonna watch them. We not we not even watch. I'm not even watching. We chilling. You know what I'm saying? That's my that's those are my grandkids. I don't expect you to pay me because those are my grandkids. That's my family. You know what I'm saying? But when people, I just like you know, to each his own. Everybody has their own opinion. Like just like just like everybody has they has an asshole. To me, I don't really think that grandparents, like, you know, like I, I know this lady who used to watch, um, who used to babysit and she would charge her grand, her, her kids to watch. She would charge her kids as well to watch her grandkids, like through the state. And I kind of thought that was kind of weird to me, like, because now, you know, like, I just think that's weird. Like I would never charge my kids to watch my grandkids. Like, I just think that's weird. Like, I don't know. Maybe I'm, am I the only one that feels that way? Like I, I just wouldn't take money from my kids to watch my grandkids because like, first of all, you need your money to take care of your kids. Second of all, we family, that's what you're supposed to do. And if you at home all day and you don't got to work, then why don't you just spend time with your grandkids? Like, I don't know. I've never charged. Tati has tried to offer me money and I'm like, are you serious? I, I get offended like when she she offers me stuff like that because that's my grandson. That's my the love of my life, my little grandson. And I get offended if she was to ask me. And she does. She's asked me several times and I get offended because don't ask me no shit like that. Like, I don't need no money to watch him. That's my that's my little boy right there. Like, no. And me and him, don't, we, you know, we don't go around cussing and stealing and shit like that. My little tinky man. You know, that's my little tinky man. But I just find like that's weird when people like charge you know what I'm saying? Like I wouldn't charge to watch my grandkids, but you know, so that, that goes to show right there that, you know, she's probably doing it for the money versus the love. Because if you love them, why are you calling them names like that? Like seriously. So I really, honestly, I feel like you should have a talk with her. Like seriously, like we all need to communicate a little bit better, but in my heart of hearts, I really don't find that it's going to be helpful to her. Like seriously, I don't. And if you've already tried and you tried and you tried, then I guess the next step would be to to report her. And it's unfortunate. Some people might be like, oh, that's a snitch move. But you don't know that because these kids is in there throwing knives and stuff and stealing. That shit is not cool and it's not good and it's not safe. So before one of them kids get really hurt, it's best that she tells somebody something. So that way it's, it's not on her conscience. Because as long as she sits there as the aunt and allows that shit and watches that shit, then she ain't no better than them. And then that's also a form of child neglect on your part because you ain't doing shit about it. If you you seeing all of this going down that you are um obligated to report it like you know what i'm saying like on some real shit so you guys i'm gonna let you guys go because um it is only two that i was gonna do today so i think i've i've talked long enough plus my mouth is dry now too and shit I, she told me to hold on to my wig i held on to this motherfucker for real um I've seen some bad kids in my day. I don't really like to be around kids that's bad, bad, because I don't have the patience for them. So I just try to stay the fuck away from them. But I know this much that it all starts at home. So the way you talk to them and treat them is the way they're going to act. Bottom line, straightforward. And then it's not always like that. It's like sometimes you're super strict like me with my kids. And I've been and some some of them, you know, you always got to have a black sheep in the family, like especially if you have a lot of kids. There's always going to be one of them that are the black sheep, meaning they could just be told different than the rest. They don't want to do nothing with their life. They don't want to. They want to. They don't want to be about nothing. They want to drink, smoke, do drugs, whatever. You always gonna have a black sheep in your family if you have a lot of kids. Like I always say to everybody, they be like, "You got so many kids. Do you love them the same?" I don't love them all the same. They all have the same amount of love for me, but they, I love each one of them different. And I don't expect the other one to be like the other one because they all are different. They all have their own personalities. So one is this way, one is that way. One is neat and clean. One is super smart. One is crafty. One is is musically one is lazy whatever you know what i'm saying i love them all the same but each one of them is different however since i have five of them it's no guarantee that they're all gonna be successful you know what i'm saying so there's always a black sheep in the family but i try to stay away from bad kids because like, listen i can't be bothered I ain't trying to do no jail time. They don't let you wear cute wigs in jail. Like, and I I like my wigs. Like, I don't really want to wear cornrows. So, you know, that's just not for me. So I hope you guys have an amazing Valentine's Day. You know what I'm saying? I love you guys. Um, enjoy your evening or day or afternoon or morning or wherever you're watching this. Happy Valentine's Day from my heart to you guys. Because all of you guys, is, I've got a lot of Valentine's.
you guys is on my Valentine's too, whether you know it or not. If you watch this motherfucking video today, y'all is my Valentine's, okay? Y'all spent Valentine's Day with me. Means y'all is my Valentine's, okay? Get over it. So I love you guys. Stay deep and deep delicious. Make sure you rate, comment, subscribe. Leave your opinions and suggestions below and enjoy your days. And make sure you watch my beauty video later on today. Or if you watch this later on in the evening, it's already up. So watch it and spend another portion of your Valentine's with me too. All right. Bye.